watching Pouring the Tea with Massey. Hello there. Hey guys. And I'm Lee. I'm Jeremy. And this is an extra specially sparkly episode of yes. Pouring the Tea with yes, Massey. Thank you for being here with us. If you've not seen this before, this episode is where we get the chance to do a deep dive into either a part of the acrylic fluid world, either to talk to you a bit more about YouTube, talk to you about social medias, yeah. um, just offer up some of our hints and tips and advice after having a YouTube channel now for gosh, almost, exactly. two, almost two years. Yeah. Um, which is crazy to think about. Um, so if you're here for an acrylic pour, we'll be back on Sunday to do yeah. that, this coming Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Absolutely. But the main topic for today's Pouring the Tea with Massey is going to be how I apply resin and that diamond dust sparkle top yeah. coat to acrylic pores. So please stick around for that because it's going to be super informative and a lot of you have been asking for it. So finally, I've got the recipe right here. Yes. So before we get to that, let me tell you a little bit more about the Fluid Art Experience. I know, which I'm so excited about. It's coming up very, very soon. July the 21st to the 23rd. Ourselves and five other artists. Yes. Tell us who they are, big boy. Well, we got Sarah Taylor. We have Pieces of Tara. We have Mixed Media Girl. We have Cause Creations, Miss Kathleen. And we also have Garrick Brown. And ourselves. And ourselves. Pouring over three days for you. Um, it's going to be a heck of a lot of fun. If you've got so much questions, fun. if you want to hear tips and first-hand experiences, yeah. but mainly if you want to come and feel the paint with us, Fluid Art Experience is where to do Absolutely. just that. All right, so to my how to resin and put the sparkly diamond and glitter on top of my pieces. Yes. A bit of context, and I will talk about this at the table, but someone somewhere not that long ago gave me some, what I think is particularly terrible advice. And that was, don't show you guys everything that we do. If we want to be taken seriously as artists in this community, and if we want to get our pieces of art into galleries and such, we shouldn't be telling you what to do. We should be keeping it a secret. <laughs> now I took that to heart and mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we have got some pieces in a gallery and I had the chance to speak to some people, some more people about it and they said hogwash. It doesn't matter at all exactly. whether we show you our yeah. techniques and our tips and tell you what we're doing and that doesn't then detract away from the art that we're producing. So at the first available opportunity I wanted to really show you how I did that sparkly top coat. Yeah. Um, it's been on a few of the pieces that we've given away in our live chats before so you'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you've been with us here a while. Mm -hmm. So without much further ado let's get to it. I'm in the studio on my own because I do tend to resin. The show pony yes. is there with me for moral support. Exactly. But uh, this one is going to be super informational. It is not how to apply resin to all your pieces, but how to apply resin and the sparkly top coat. If you want to see how to apply resin and fix it if it's gone wrong, there's another episode on the channel for just that. Exactly. So let's get to the table. All right, ladles and jelly spoons. It is Lee here, solo at the table. And it is this 30 by 40 inch canvas that I made for TKs. You've seen this on the channel. The creation video is up and I will link it right here for you somewhere. And um, I did some beautiful flip cups and then some ribbons into it and it's dried beautifully. But like with a lot of the metallics and even this kind of metallic black, which was underneath right here, it needs to be brought back to life again and I've got choices. I could either get a clear varnish on here and varnish this piece top to bottom, or I could do something which I'm going to do, which is apply a resin and then I am going to do my sparkle diamond-esque finish right on top of this. Now, if you don't know what I mean by that, well, let me show you. <gasps> uh, this is what I mean. Now, it's hard to see in this light but on here, on top of the resin, there is a proprietary blend, there we go, got it there, of sparkle, which makes this whole piece just dance and shine. Um, and it catches the light beautifully. I've given away a couple of these pieces that I've done this kind of technique on on the channel in lives before. And um, you guys have been asking me for a while to show you how I did it. Now, let me be totally honest with you. 
I've not shown you how to do this because someone who I trusted said to me once that if I ever want to get my artwork recognised, if I want it to be in a gallery, then there's certain things that I need to do and, and that is not show you guys everything because if I show you everything, you can go and do it yourself. And then what's the point of getting that in a gallery? So I stupidly listened to that. However, that's a load of hogwash. Just because I show you how to do it doesn't mean that you're gonna do exactly what I've done or that you would do it the same way. You might end up doing it better. You might end up doing it worse, but it's never gonna be the same because this is fluid art. And that piece that I just showed you is actually going up in a space and I had a conversation with them and they said absolutely not just because you're putting stuff on a YouTube channel does not mean that we wouldn't take your art so um, I'm going to show you exactly what I do and I'll take you through this process step by step now this is not a how to resin video but this is a how I resin and how I'm going to finish this piece video in particular if you're looking for a how to resin or how to fix a resin gone wrong I do have one of those as well and I will now link that in the channel for you here now the show pony isn't here because he tends not to resin and uh, he's doing something else instead so um, i'm just going to walk you through this one myself step by step and, and i'll show you exactly what i'm going to do now canvas prep that's where we're going to start i have sprayed the back of this one very generously with water now i could and if i was going to just do a total resin finish on this without the glass glitter that i'm going to put on i actually would back this underneath with cardboard so that there was no sag whatsoever in this canvas because when you put the resin on it tends to pool in the middle and then it pulls away from the sides and you probably then have to resin it, resin it a couple of times however because there is a finish going on top of the resin i'm not going to be just as i'm not going to be as uh, delicate with the resin finish i'm going to tip a lot of this resin off the resin is actually really there just as an adhesive to the actual finish on top and to get my edges. So um, anyway, I'll explain about that a bit more as we go through this process. All right, so first things first, this has been sitting in the garage. And what I need to do is I need to make sure that there's no oils, no fingerprints, no contaminants that are sitting on top of this piece that would actually stop the resin from curing. And the way that we do that is by taking a alcohol, a isopropyl alcohol, and then just gently wiping that across the top of the canvas and making sure that I get the sides too. So this is just normal paper towel. I'm going to somewhat saturate the paper towel with this. And I, I'd prefer to spray on the paper towel than on the piece because there have been times before where I've resin too soon and uh, the paint has come off the piece. But then just taking the isopropyl alcohol it's in the kitchen towel, paper towel, I forgot what you guys call it. We call it paper towel, kitchen roll, kitchen roll we call it in England. I'm going to just gently wipe down all the sides, making sure that all the schmutz, all the dust, all the contaminants are off it and any of my greasy fingerprints are no longer on here. And it's as simple as that. Next things, I'm going to double glove. The double gloving is a step that I learned after watching many people do resin. And why do you double glove? Well, you double glove because resin gets everywhere. And if you double glove, then when you're finished with the gloved hand that is full of resin, you've got another gloved hand underneath it. And uh, you will thank me for this little tip later for sure. But double gloving is key to making sure that I keep my hands nice and clean. And when I touch things like the torch and stuff, I don't get them all over. So now I've got two pairs of gloves on. Um, I've got some craft sticks. I've obviously got my resin and I always prefer to use art resin. So I've got art resin here, which I bought from fluid-art.co. Uh, they've actually got resin for sale on their website and it came just as quickly as Amazon Prime, but why would I buy it off Amazon if I can buy it from a small business owner? So do check out fluid-art.co for your resin. Now let's talk about the diamond dust or the finish, the diamond sparkly finish. Now I say that this is a proprietary mix because it really is just that. What I've done is I've mixed different textures of glass glitter, diamond dust, mica flakes together. So I am not gonna be able to tell you exactly what is in my mix here because some of it I don't even know what it was. Some of it I just had around and some of it I kind of just play around with. 
but half of this for sure is this stuff which is by Floracraft and it's called Diamond Dust and you can buy this in both 14 ounce tubs or smaller tubs from Amazon. I will link this product for you on my description box. Now one of the ones that I can't tell you about is this one. What I do know is that I bought this one off someone who was on YouTube. I will try and find their site for you so you can reach out to them directly. I bought it by the bag and this person normally sells it in smaller quantities. So I asked for some bulk options from her. But the reason why I needed something else was the diamond dust is really, really fine. This is a very small flake and what I wanted was I wanted bigger flakes. And that was the reason why I got this product too. Now, I have tried out a product that you can get from Maya Imports. I will link this in the description box for you. And they do a product that's called Iridescent Ice, and it is a glass glitter. It's a German imported product, and it works really well. And if you use ATD2022, ATD2022, you actually will get a discount off their products. So that's Mayer's Imports. I'll link it in the description box so that you can see it. All they do is sparkles and glitters and all sorts of wonderfulness. So please go and check them out because they do different kind of colors as well. The one I have used before is the white and it is their glass glitter. Um, so um, that is one that I have specifically used. Now, what do I do with all these products? Well, I just mix them up. This is a Tupperware dish that I've just mixed all of these glitters together in to give me what I call my proprietary blend of topping. All right, so let's get the resin on this canvas. Now I started off by saying that this is just a coating. It's kind of, instead of using Mod, Mod Podge, but I don't love the way that Mod Podge dries, Mod Podge dries, when I use it on top of my acrylic canvases. I prefer the glass-like look of resin, and I also want resin on the sides. Now this is a 30 by 40 inch canvas. If I was going to resin this properly top to bottom, that would be 42 ounces of product. That would be 21 ounces of resin and 21 ounces of hardener. That would be my total volume. Now I'm not gonna use 42 ounces. I'm probably gonna use something between 20 and 30 because I just want a millimeter or two worth of resin on top of this canvas. But I'm going to mix up 30 ounces just so that I've got a little extra because you know the motto here is more is more. Now in my resin video I weigh the resin on a scale and a lot of people out there commented quite rightly so that resin actually should be measured by volume not by weight. So if I want 30 ounces I should be doing 15 ounces of one product and 15 ounces of another on a cup that has measurements on it rather than doing it on a scale because one of the products is heavier than the other. But I'm going to say this to you guys, in the 100 pieces that I have resined using a scale, I've never had one not work. And that's mainly because when I resin, I do smaller, smaller size canvases. And for those, it doesn't matter because the actual difference between weight and volume is very, very minuscule. So, uh, but because this is a bigger canvas and I'm going to use 30 ounces, I am in fact going to do this into a measuring jug and I'm going to do 15 ounces of both product. So I'm going to put this right here and what I'm going to do is measure out 15 ounces of my resin and then I'm going to measure 15 ounces of the hardener. And this is going to take this to 30 ounces in total. And then, ladles and jelly spoons, we're going to mix this bad boy up for the next five minutes, scraping down all the edges, making sure that every single bit of resin in this pot is amalgamated. And by that, what I mean is this. Take in, I take two craft sticks or popsicle sticks when I've got this amount of volume because I kind of feel like it's more like a whisk. I'm going to scrape the edges, scrape the bottom, scrape the edges. I'm going to set a timer for five minutes and I'm going to mix this bad boy together. We'll see you back in five. Woo! Five minutes are up. I tell you, that is a workout. All right, so you might look into this pot and say to yourself, but Lee, there are a ton of bubbles in there. And you know what? There are. 
Um, I mix this way more vigorously than I would do if I was just mixing resin. However, I actually do mix my resin for my plain resin pieces fairly vigorously too. I'm a big fan in using the torch to pop air bubbles and I would much rather have the resin mixed properly and pop the bubbles using a torch rather than be so gentle with the resin that I mix it in properly and then get huge rivers of unmixed resin in my painting because that is way harder to sick to fix and to solve. So um, yeah, I mix this one fairly vigorously um, because there's gonna be a coating that goes in this. If there's a few air bubbles, you won't see them on the top of this canvas. So that was five minutes worth of mixing. Now, remember we wiped our canvas down with isopropyl alcohol, so this is super clean. Next, I'm gonna get this onto the canvas. Now, if I was doing this uh, without a resin, or sorry, without a sparkle top coat, what I would be doing is making sure that I've got a fairly even distribution of this resin all over the canvas. However, what I'm going to be concentrating on with this first dollop of resin that's gonna go onto this canvas is actually making sure that my sides are covered because I do not put my sparkle onto the sides. I only put the sparkle in the middle. So I have just poured onto this canvas there 15, 16 ounces of the volume of this resin. And I'm now going to take my hand and I'm gonna push the resin over the edge of the canvas to cover the sides. And then I'm gonna take the excess into the middle because I would much rather have not enough resin on this canvas this first time around and add to it rather than too much and have to take it off. And when I say too much, what am I thinking about? Well, specifically this, that if you have a coat of resin that is more than just a couple of millimeters of thickness on top of this canvas, the diamond dust sparkle kind of proprietary mix of glitter that you put on top of your canvas will just disappear into the resin. The resin will just eat it up like it does everything else and you won't actually see the sparkle at all in your canvas. So there is a fine line here, peeps, between putting too much resin on your canvas that it swallows up your sparkle and then not putting enough on because the sparkle then won't stick. So clearly what you want to start off by doing is not putting enough on and then you can always go back and add afterwards. So this 13, 14, 15 ounces of a resin might not be enough for me to get a really nice coat onto the middle of this canvas, but it is gonna do my edges. And all I'm doing as I do this is I'm using my gloved hand to run the resin from the top down the sides and where my hand just runs smoothly all the way down the side of the canvas, then I know that it is covered with resin. I'm also making sure to finger the sides, just to make sure that every bit of the sides are all covered too. Now, I'm almost there. I've almost done all of the sides. I'm just making sure to push some of the excess resin into the middle of the canvas. There's, there's, there's almost, almost just the right amount of resin on here. Almost. Let me just make sure that all my sides are covered. Yep, my hand runs really smoothly down the sides of each one of these sides. Excuse me, peeps, I'm right in camera view here. I'm just making sure. Okay, so everything is covered on the sides. Now I see that there is a little bare spot in the middle of this canvas. I think I got it. I think this might be actually the perfect amount. So I put 30 ounces of product into my jug to start with, and I have used 16 ounces on this canvas, whereas the resin art calculator, which I've shown you guys before, said I needed 41 ounces of product if I was going to do this with a full resin coat. Now here's my kind of thoughts on this. I think that art resin kind of, you know, tell you an awful lot of products because they want you to use a lot of product. I don't think I've ever used exactly what art resins say on my canvases, but if you're a newbie and a beginner and you're just really starting out, do what they say on the calculator and then you can tip off any excess if you have it. The product is expensive though, you know, so you want to get used to being able to use it. 
All right. Wow. When they say that like resin really brings your paintings back to life, this is what people mean. It, this is stunning right now. And it is only gonna get more beautiful as we carry on. Now I have just removed one layer of my gloves because now I can pick up my torch and torch off any of the air bubbles. Stunning. All right, so I've got 16 ounces of a resin on this canvas. I'm gonna save what's left over because I have some canvases to resin and I'm gonna do those straight after this. Next, let's, this, is the, this is the fiddly part. Next, we're gonna get this product onto the canvas. Now, what do I do? I have these little plastic, sorry, paper cups. These paper cups were left over from the Fluid Art Experience. Kathleen uses these for swipes. But I'm going to use these to help me get this glass glitter, this proprietary mix of loveliness, onto the canvas. So, I'm going to take one of them as a scoop and I'm going to pour it into the other so that the edges are nice and clean. This one goes back into my diamond dust. And then I'm going to create a little spout by clinching the paper cup together and now I'm gonna pour this onto the canvas. Now, there is a knack. I've done this maybe 10 times on different canvases. You want to get as even a layer of this product onto your canvas as possible. If you don't do it evenly, it will actually notice. You will be able to notice it. So the way that I go about this is, I start on the edges first, and then I work in towards the middle. So I'll probably do one half of the canvas and then do the other half of the canvas and I'll show you what I mean. But I don't intentionally pour it over the edges because I will take my gloved finger in a little while and swipe around the edges to clean up the edges so that there's no glass glitter on it. So this is how we're going to do it. And this is going to be hard for you to see this, but I'm going to take my product and I'm going to just gently back and forth and sprinkle this on top of my canvas, trying to get as even a coat as I can. So when I go over a piece, I'll go over it just the same amount of times. And I'm just gonna do the edges. And then I'm gonna come down the edge right here towards the halfway mark. And you'll notice I'm doing this on pee pads. There's a couple of reasons. One, it's just easier for me to do the cleanup of the resin because I'm gonna be using this table again very shortly to do some pours. And two, because then I can actually pick up the excess diamond dust that I don't use because the excess will stay on top of the canvas and I can tilt that off and then I can use it again. So now I've got my edges, now I'm gonna fill in the middle. Um, how much gliss, gliss, gliss glitter, this glass glitter do you use? You know, it's, it's very, very difficult for me to say. I haven't done a calculation of how much I use on my canvases. It kind of is what you can see by eye. What you're looking for here is a healthy topping of the product without being too much so you lose the piece underneath. So I'm just gently sprinkling, trying to basically put as the same amount, the same layer of this product onto the canvas every time I sprinkle it. And I'm gonna keep doing this until my first half is covered. Now I'm gonna go over 
the edges only on the second hole. All right, so we've got a very healthy level of glitter, dust, diamond, dust, glitter all over this canvas now. And what I'm now gonna do, because I don't love the idea of getting the edges with the glitter on them, I only want it on the top of the canvas, is I'm gonna take my gloved finger and just run my finger now tightly all the way down the canvas. Now this is glass, so please be careful if you are gonna do this. But what I like to do, or the reason why I like to do this is because this now takes up any glass that might have fallen off the top of the canvas. And it just allows me just to kind of gently wipe that up whilst still leaving that resin coat on the top. So I think that this just kind of helps clean up the edges. I'm not gonna put this one in a frame because it's a huge canvas. So the edges will be on show. So I like to kind of just tidy it up. Now, because there isn't 42 ounces of resin on this canvas, it's not gonna keep dripping. It is not gonna fall over the edges. There's gonna be very, very little waste that's gonna come off the top of this canvas. If I was just doing a resin coat and I was gonna put in 35, 40 ounces of uh, product, then I'd have to keep coming and swiping this one and kind of making sure that the edges were all nice and tidy and it wasn't pulling off all the resin from the top. But I don't need to do that because there isn't a lot of excess resin, so nothing is gonna be tipping. Now, the great thing about this product is where there is too much or whether it isn't an even layer, it will actually just tilt off and it will shake off when I come to tilt this one up, or you know, when, it's, when it is dry in 24 hours. Um, so if there are any parts of this that are a little kind of uneven, then they will just tilt off kind of naturally. Um, I did just fix an area over here that I kind of over sprayed with the product as I kind of just started to play with it, mainly because I was doing it with my the other hand and uh, I put way too much of the product on over here. But I've managed to sprinkle off now some of the excess so it looks perfect. And that is it. I'm done, I will not torch this again clearly because now it doesn't matter if there's air bubbles, not that there are any, but if there were air bubbles under here, it would be fine. Um, now I'm just gonna leave this. I'm going to sit here and leave this now for 24 hours. And once it's dry, I will come back and I'll show you exactly how it's gonna look. So there you have it. There you have it. <laughs> He's laughing because this might be the 17th time we've done this. <laughs> I mean, some serious <laughs> technical difficulties here today. It's been a ride. It's been a ride indeed. <laughs> um, all right, so I've dimmed the camera light, the studio lights, I'm sorry, because the pieces are always a little better. It's gonna, you're gonna be able to see this better in a, in a dappled light. Yes, dappled. Dappled light. All right, show pony. Hopefully for the last time, but it's your <laughs> first time. Let's see this. Okay, so there you have it. Thank you, Showpony, that's perfect. I can see all that sparkle, all that shimmer. What the resin underneath has done is brought the colors of the gold and the metallic blacks back to life again. And that sparkle top coat has just added some extra luxury. I do really love this. I hope you enjoyed this too. And if I skipped over something or if there was something that I didn't explain to you guys properly, please, please shout it out in the comment section below. Any questions you may have, because I promise to answer every single one of them. No question or comment ever goes unanswered. So please do drop us a little comment if there's something that you'd like me to explain. But I hope you really enjoyed seeing how I put this kind of top coat on one of these pieces. There we have it back into the light.
lights. Yes, yes, into yes. Into the light. So in other news, did you know that I went and saw this Latin magician last night? How was he? He was amazing. He said, unos, dos, poof, and he disappeared without a trace. <laughs> Stupid. And that has to be my favorite, <laughs> however, of the, of the dad jokes <laughs> thus far. That was very good. What I love about that joke more is that you can't ever say it because you're always giggling so much. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. For real this time. <laughs> so just a quick reminder, Fluid Art Experience, hotel bookings in the description below. Please go check us out at fluidartexperience.com. Yes. All the information will be there and available to book on May the 1st. Mm -hmm. Sunday, this Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We've got our six artist collaboration yeah. with everyone from the Fluid Art Experience. And what we're going to be pouring for you is a piece that we're going to teach you in the classes. Exactly. So you're going to get to see firsthand exactly what it is that we're teaching you all. And just to note, by the way, that each artist is doing different techniques during the course of the three days. Yes. So you can absolutely book more than one class with an artist and see two, three different types of techniques, which will be really yeah. fun. Um, that's it. That's it. And that is it. Please like and subscribe. Please share to your social medias. If this is fun for you, then we would love for you to let us know in the comments as well. Or if you just don't want this style of content and you just want us to be pouring, let us know too. Exactly. We prefer you guys to be honest. Sharing this to your social media really helps us get the name and the word out there too. So we'd appreciate that also. But it's Friday night. Please go and enjoy the rest of your evening. Yes. And uh, we'll see you back here on Sunday for that sixth artist collaboration on Sunday morning. Looking forward to it. We'll see you there. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Thank you for watching. Pouring the tea with Massey. And now to spank the Patreons. Yes, let's spank the Patreons. Let's do it. Who are the Patreons? Well, the Massey Posse, we like <laughs> to call them, are a group of people that have signed up to patreon.com. And on our patronage, you have the opportunity to get levels and perks for different things. Yes. So at one level, you might get a sneak peek behind the scenes video or some footage. At another level, you'll be invited to monthly off the YouTube channel live streams. And at a separate level, you might also get once a month tutorials. Yes. So it's a really fun opportunity for people just to have a completely different view of Massey Art Studios. Mm -hmm. So we have some people to thank. Yes. At our gold level, we have Elizabeth Gilano, Gillian Kennedy, we have Gloria Salicki and Jane Klein. We have Janice Swansea and Kelly Stowell. We have Kirsten Blackley. We have Linda Seriani. We have Mary Doulas or Mama Doulas. Mama Doulas. Patsy Petrelli and Rebecca Hawes Winters. We have Sharon Luffy and Stephanie Hancock. We've got Tammy Housebrook. We've got Terry Leshner and we've got Trisha West. Yes. Then in our platinum level, we have Elaine Burton, Janice Pittman. And Steve. And Steve. We have Susan Chigori and Susan Shepperson. Susan Shepperson. Yes. And at our diamond level, at from diamond one you level. all know and love, yes. it's Sparkles. Sparkles. So thank you so very much to those guys and everyone else that's here down below, our bronze and silver Patreons too. We really yeah. appreciate you. We really appreciate you wanting to be here with us and support us through this wonderful journey of art. Honestly, we really can't thank you enough, so thank you so very much. Hey, look at me, man, what I become. I've been running.